Picture this. You rise from your bed with hair in many directions and eyes half shut. You understand that only caffeine can make you a somewhat functioning person. For countless Americans, the solution is a fast scoop of instant coffee. Not an elegant espresso maker or visiting Starbucks. Simply pour hot water, mix it up, and your coffee is prepared. Have you ever considered how this magical powder comes to be? I visited a factory where they make instant coffee to see around. And let me tell you, the process is interesting, a little high-tech and a little strange. So if you've ever taken a sip of your morning cup and thought, wait, how did this bean turn into brown dust in my mug? Then stay right here. You'll understand why instant coffee has been America's sleepy-eyed hero for so long by the end. Of course, the story starts with history. Instant coffee didn't just show up, it's been waking people up for more than a hundred years. If you have ever found yourself looking at your cup of instant coffee, thinking, how does this brown powder turn into coffee? Then stay with us. We will take a trip inside an American factory to observe the process of roasting, brewing, drying, and packing instant coffee before it arrives on your kitchen shelf. I assure you that after this experience, you won't view your morning scoop in the same way again. It first came out for sale in the early 1900s, and by World War II, U.S. soldiers were drinking it in the trenches. Instant coffee is still very popular today. Folgers, Maxwell House, Starbucks VIA, and Cafe Bustello are some of the most popular brands in the U.S. Instant coffee is the best choice if you're in a dorm, camping in the woods, or just too tired to make a pot. And how is it made? To be honest, it made me like it a lot more. It begins with beans, similar to all coffee. In this situation, green coffee beans. These are directly from large regions growing coffee such as Brazil, Colombia, and Vietnam, delivered to enormous roasting facilities here in the States. The aroma of unroasted coffee, earth, and grass fills the warehouse. It gives a feeling as if you are strolling through a massive burlap sack. The beans get roasted in the same way they do for your preferred fresh coffee, but on an enormously bigger scale. Roasters large as football fields buzz with heat, converting the beans into brown ones we recognize. The goal here is to make the best flavor base possible that will still taste good when it is turned into instant form. This is the part that blew my mind. Instant coffee doesn't skip brewing. It just brews everything at once, on a huge scale. The roasted beans are ground and brewed in huge industrial percolators which are basically giant stainless steel coffee makers that are taller than I am. The brew is very strong, much stronger than a normal cup. And what about the smell? The smell is so strong that it almost makes you feel lightheaded. The workers there often made jokes, saying that they didn't require coffee because simply being in that room made them feel awake. Following this, the coffee is filtered and brewed to be more potent. They remove additional water until it resembles a sort of thick, dark syrup, similar to molasses. Now it has a bitter taste and cannot be consumed. However, this concentrate is the hidden component that helps extend the shelf life of liquid coffee. From here onwards, it can undergo spray drying or freeze drying process. The quick and cheap way is to spray dry. Think of a huge hair dryer that is also a tornado. The strong coffee is shot through nozzles into a tall drying tower that is full of hot air. The droplets of liquid dry right away in the air and fall to the ground as fine powder. Folgers and Maxwell House make their famous blends this way. In hot water, the powder dissolves right away. It looks like brown snow when it falls into bins. It's strangely beautiful, but it's strange to think that it's going to be your morning cup of coffee tomorrow. Conversely, freeze-drying is the superior method to accomplish this. This technique is utilized for Starbucks VA and other premium instant coffees. The concentrate becomes a solid through freezing, and thereafter it gets placed in a vacuum chamber rather than being warmed up. In that place, ice crystals immediately become vapor, which leaves behind dry coffee crystals. The final outcome is granules that are more substantial and have a better taste. 
Standing in the room for freeze-drying feels as if you are inside a science laboratory. You see cold chambers, layered trays, and hard-frozen panels that transform into luxury coffee crystals. The instant coffee is ready to be packaged once it has dried. It is put into jars, tins, or single-serving packets. Folgers sticks to their big kitchen jars, but Starbucks VIA makes little packets that are easy to take with you. You can almost hear Cafe Bustello yelling at you from the grocery store shelf. It's like being in a trance to watch the production line. Jars whizzing down conveyor belts, lids snapping on, and labels spinning into place. Every day, millions are made. The smell here is still amazing, like the ghost of a coffee shop floating through the air. Then, it is placed in a box for shipping across the whole United States. You may see it at grocery stores, gas stations, college dormitory vending machines, and even on military bases. Instant coffee does not require particular storage as it remains fine while stored on the shelf. Simply place a jar in your pantry. It will be available when you require it. A superior informed me that winter season and the week of college final exams are their most hectic periods. It is logical. Students who feel cold and fatigued in the morning necessitate plenty of coffee. Honestly, looking at how large the distribution network is made me understand America's great need for coffee. Some coffee snobs look down on instant coffee, but really? It's great. It works quickly, consistently, and dependably. People who hike swear by it. People who camp throw it in their backpacks. It seems like college kids live on it. And for parents with kids or office workers who are tired, grinding beans isn't practical. Instant coffee is what keeps them going. Brands have also gotten better. Freeze-dried versions taste a lot like brewed ones. Will it take the place of a latte made by a barista? Nope. But does it have to? Not at all. The point of instant coffee is to be quick and easy. I have learned some fascinating facts. In North America, the U.S. holds the largest market for instant coffee. However, Europeans and Asians consume much more of it compared to Americans. During World War II, soldiers received Maxwell House instant coffee in their provisions, which led many of them to become fans for life. Additionally, certain factories recycle used coffee grounds by converting them into fertilizer or biofuel. So, it is possible that your used coffee grounds might be quietly fueling a vehicle or helping to cultivate another coffee plant. That's quite fascinating, wouldn't you agree? That is the complete tale of instant coffee in America. It starts from green beans, which are then roasted and turned into spray-dried powder or freeze-dried crystals. Finally, these end up in jars and packets ready for sale. Perhaps next time when you prepare a fast cup, you'll remember the fascinating science involved in that spoonful. I must ask, which brand of instant coffee do you prefer most? Do you enjoy Folgers, Bustelo, or Starbucks VIA? Please leave a comment, like this post, and subscribe to witness more food journeys behind the scenes.